Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last session, we talked about nonverbal communication. We started off with that, and there I promised you that uh, we will be talking about facial expressions in this session, and uh, we will be looking at the concept of deceit, which uh, is online right now, and many of you are probably doing it. So, what I would like to quickly share with you is that this is what we are trying to cover. I will just introduce different aspects of facial expressions to you, talk about basic emotions then give you a test to find out how good you are at deciphering emotions in faces and then we will look at the references quickly and hopefully you will be able to know a little bit more about how faces communicate emotions. Now, you see that uh, the face probably is the most important source of information about emotions. Emotions are communicated through gestures as you could very well see in the gestures of Captain Haddock or Tintin, but face was very significantly a component of the communication of those emotions. Although through just gestures, you can communicate emotions, but facial expressions are capable of expressing a wide range of emotions and a wide range of emo expressions which are not necessarily emotions. For instance, uh, when you want to say that I do not know you may very often make a gesture as well as a facial expression together which looks something like this. Now, this facial expression is not an emotion. So, you need to differentiate between emotions and this is a facial emblem, because it is substituting for a distinctive meaning in a sociocultural context. It is not a direct expression. However, let us keep it in mind that uh, the face has the maximum number of muscles that we can control, it also has a certain number of muscles which we cannot control. The reason for telling this to you is because when we can control the muscles, we are able to manipulate the emotions which are being displayed on our faces, but when we cannot control some of the emotions, uh, some of the muscles, then in spite of our not intending to do so, we are able to, we are giving away some of the emotions or if we are trying to enact certain emotions, we are failing to do so. Theorists and researchers tell us that uh, human beings are capable of making and identifying more than a thousand facial expressions. Now, it might sound a little outlandish to you, but if we let, let us assume that there are six or seven basic facial emotions, which we will deal with. And if we allot to them different degrees of intensity, let us say intensity difference of five degrees then here itself you have 35 different emotions. Now, with this just add that sometimes emotions are not pure, emotions are mixed. Let us say combination of happiness and surprise, combination of happiness and calm, combination of sadness and disgust, sadness of anger. Now, you combine them and give them intensity, you have maybe another 100 expressions. So, this statement that uh, we are able to display and identify a a thousand emotions, a thousand expressions, different expressions is not really unrealistic. However, I would say that in most social spaces, we would be able to discern very easily between 200 to 300 different facial emotions. And then of course, there are other expressions, but as I indicated in the slide earlier, we tend to disguise our emotions very often. So, that is something which we need to keep in our minds that is something which we are going to discuss today in slightly greater detail than in the earlier class where we dealt with gestures. Now, points to remember this is very important emotions can be masked, disguised or enacted. Now, in a social space as I told you in the earlier class, we need to tell lies. For instance, uh, you have a guest and you are getting bored because he is overstaying his duration over there in your house 
and you cannot tell him to leave. So, you are giving artificial smiles, you are trying to show interests, interest in whatever he is telling. Now, this is these are examples of white lies. White lies are innocent lies, which we continuously keep on telling, showing, displaying in various ways in a social space, because that is expected of us. We so that we do not look rude. For instance, my let us say 12 year old daughter comes to me and asks me whether her painting is looking nice or not. Now, even if it is not a nice painting, I will say that it is a good painting, it is a nice painting, I will give a word of appreciation. Now, what I judge this painting to be is immaterial, but it is important to encourage this person. Now, if I ask this question whether truth is being told or falsehood, then it is very difficult to answer this question. Okay. This is another example of white lies. Now, Ekman has developed, Paul Ekman I have referred to him earlier, developed a facial action coding system, which classifies different kinds of emotions and the different muscular movements. We will use a little bit of that in order to understand uh, how people use different muscles or different parts of the face to communicate emotions. We will also discuss the concept of micro expressions, which are expressions which emerge for a very short period of time and very often carry genuine emotions. We will also talk about something which is known as squelched expressions, which are expressions which are suppressed even before they can appear. Now, you see that uh, I have already discussed this in the earlier section, research tells us that facial emotions till Paul Ekman uh, pointed it out, were are considered to be socially driven. Okay. There were certain theorists who felt that all our expressions of emotions, including facial emotions are socially driven, socially generated. But it was Paul Ekman who found uh, by studying certain videos of uh, communities who had no touch with civilization for a very long time, that certain facial expressions are emotion uh, universal in the sense that they are available in almost all the countries. And when somebody is not watching you, these are the expressions you give. Okay. And, uh, this is something we will touch upon a little later. One of the other important issues that needs to be pointed out is that the concept of symmetry and asymmetry. If this face is divided into two com components, then it is if there is a match between both the sides that is symmetrical, if there is no match that is asymmetrical. Genuine expressions are more symmetrical and false expressions are more asymmetrical, in spite of the fact that even genuine expressions are a little asymmetrical. One side of the exp uh, face expresses these emotions to a slightly greater degree than the other side of the face. So, if you are looking at uh, some of the fundamental facial emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, fear, wonder, disgust and so on. In today's talk, we will focus on the first six and we will try to identify in a very, very quick and basic way, how is it that you would be able to differentiate between these emotions. Now, the funny thing is that all our lives we look at other people's faces and uh, hence it is assumed that uh, when we are looking at somebody's face, we should be able to know to what extent, uh, what, what kind of emotion this person is displaying, whether they are genuine emotions or they are false emotions. But research tells us that our ability to identify emotions, including genuine emotions, is roughly at the level of 50 percent, which is chance level, which means that although we assume that we are good at reading faces and their emotions, we are actually not good at reading emotions and faces. Now, this is unusual, but this is very interesting. So, let us move on to some of the basic concepts that we will take up when we look at uh, deceit, because this is an interesting area, where most of you would be interested, because you would like to know whether, wh what is going on in the mind of the person, who is let us say smiling at you uh, in a uh, across a table in a negotiation, or in a job interview or whatever. So, if you are able to understand a little more about him, through his facial expressions, gesture, postures and things like that, then probably your decision making and as well as your communication would benefit from that. Masking is something which uh, 
is related to squelched excretions. Masking is where even before or during the emotion appearing, you control it. Masking can happen by putting up a dead fan face, which is a face without expressions. Masking can also take place when you substitute one expression for another expression. A very common example is classrooms where a teacher is getting angry with a person. So, whatever anger, outrage, or same or sadness the person, the student is feeling, she tends not to display that. Very often you find that it is either replaced with a deadpan expression or with a substitute expression. Okay. So, a, a student feeling angry at the teacher might be showing sadness, it is trying to display sadness. So, that the teacher will realize that actually the person is feeling bad about what he has done. Or we smile, let us say boss is abusing a subordinate and he smiles and then the smile is trying to conceal anger, humiliation sadness and a number of other emotions. So, substitutions take place and microspe expressions I have indicated uh, here I would like to say that during deceit because we are controlling our emotional expressions we manage to leak them, we manage to give expressions before we are able to control them and these expressions last anything between 1 by fourth of a second to 1 by fifteenth of a second. These are known as micro expressions. So, they are those they are so short that it is very difficult to identify them. In fact, in some of the studies that we even we have been doing, we use relatively high speed cameras anything between 1 by 50th to frame rates with frame rates of 1 by 50th to 1 by 60th of a second to 1 by 4 400th of a second while capturing facial emotions. So, that later on we can analyze and search for micro expressions. So, this is an interesting area where deceitful expressions can be identified if somebody has leaked micro expressions okay. and these generally happen in social contexts. In your personal life you do not tend to give that because you are expressing yourself, but in social space you train to control them and that is where micro expressions emerge. Now, what we are going to do right now is to look at a series of images which will give us some idea about uh, facial expressions of emotions. I will be very, very non technical, I will not go into technical issues. The first set of images are images where you see that two faces are being shown. The face on the left, left shows a smile, the face on the right shows a smile, and there is a difference in the sense that this may not be considered a genuine smile, whereas this would be considered a genuine smile. What basically happens is that when we genuinely smile, we not only manage to pull up the muscles which are around our cheeks, we also manage to pull up muscles which are around our eyes and hence there is a tightening of the eyes, there is sometimes a wrinkle around the eyes when we are smiling and generally genuine smiles can be identified by just looking at the eyes. Okay. Very often we have this expression that he smile did not touch the eyes, that is what we mean by that. So, this is a very quick uh, analysis of happiness. Sadness, here we are not looking at the non genuine expression of sadness, we will I will give you uh, images to identify those. If you look at sadness, in sadness what basically happens is that only the muscles around this place okay, get lowered a little bit, uh, get raised a little bit I am sorry and hence you have a small wrinkle over the forehead. So, the inner eyebrows raised is an indicator of sadness, which is something uh, which when you are trying to communicate false sadness may not happen, because you might raise all the muscles here okay, and thus give yourself away. Anger is something where you see that you generally train to bring both these the muscles closer together. So, the muscles on both sides of the nose is are lowered a little bit and brought together and that is how you find that uh, the expression of anger is initially displayed in the eyes and then when anger is displayed more distinctively then it touches the lower part of the body, uh, lower part of the face. In other words the upper part of the face starts displaying the emotion and when it is a full blown anger then there is bearing of the teeth, okay, opening of the lips, bearing of the teeth, jutting out of the teeth. 
fear on the other hand gets displayed when all the muscles over here are raised. Okay. However, the inner eyebrows more or less maintain their position and the, the muscles over here are raised, the eyes are widened, the pupils dilate and initially again fear gets reflected in the upper part of the face and then when it is intensified with open mouth it gets displayed in the lower part of the face. Surprise. Surprise is an emotion which is very easy to copy or easy to uh, emulate without actually feeling surprised. But the timing issue is very, very important because you see that surprise is a very short lived expression. It appears and is immediately replaced by something else. So, the moment you show surprise after that you might say so horror, you might show happiness, you might show anger. So, it is a very quick response and timing this response becomes very important when you are showing surprise. So, when you are showing surprise, if the timing is not right, you know that it is not a genuine surprise. Somebody shows surprise more quickly or the, sub, the response is a little delayed, you know that it is not genuine surprise. And uh, the intensity increases around the lips, mouth wide open when surprise is very intense. Disgust is a, on the other hand an emotion which starts in the lower part of the face okay, around the noses raising of wrinkling of the nose and then the wrinkling of the muscles around the lips. And then when it is intensified then you find that it gets reflected in the upper part between the eyes which are wrinkled. Okay. Disgust is again an emotion which is difficult uh, to identify. Uh, a differentiate between genuine and uh, false disgust uh, or I would say it is difficult easy it is easy to emulate and uh, again uh, there are definitely certain ways of finding out whether it is genuine or not based on the timing that you have. Now, what you have we have done so far is we have looked at a set of emotions. Now, what I am asking you to do is to look at our database of emotions which we elicited at certain point of time and to guess if you are able to uh, try to identify the emotions. Are you able to guess these emotions or not? Okay. So, here is the first one. What is the emotion getting communicated over here? Are you able to guess it? I will give you a minute, I will give you a few seconds and then I will give you the answer it is sadness which is getting reflected and it is getting reflected over here if you look at it very carefully. But as I told you in actual practice uh, learning how somebody is communicating emotions is difficult I will talk about it a little later. So, this is an emotion which is very easily identifiable false or true in this case genuine this happiness. Again, what is the emotion getting communicated? Are you able to get it? It is fear. Okay. Again, you see that uh, open eyes, raised eyebrows. Are you able to guess the emotion? In real circumstances, guessing emotions can be very difficult. This is surprise. this also is surprise and here you find that uh, the eyebrows do not play a very significant role or it is not easy to do that. This is sadness getting reflected in the lower part where the lips are turned down. Sadness getting reflected in the eyebrows as well as in the lower part of the face. Okay. lips turned down whereas, this is a reflection of mild disgust and because of the specs it is difficult to identify the nose wrinkling, but it is there. On the other hand if you are looking at posed expressions which means that these are not genuine expressions somebody is trying to pose them you find that uh, it the first one which is supposed to communicate smile is more of a grimace okay, rather than a smile 
and the second one which is discussed is asymmetrical, because you see that one part of the face is more intensely showing an expression rather than the other part. Even here you find that it is asymmetrical, in both the cases you find that the expressions are asymmetrical. Again sadness other than the asymmetricality, it does not get reflected in the upper part of the face in the eyebrows, where surprise is something which is easy to emulate, but as I told you the timing has to be kept in mind. Fear has been communicated through raised eyebrows as you can see over here and widened eyes, but again asymmetricality is something which is there okay. and uh, anger is something which uh, to a certain extent uh, is reflected in this part of the eyebrows, but it also reflected in the other parts to a certain extent. And uh, when you train yourself well, when you train yourself well, you are in a position to differentiate between these emotions. Now, the reason I am talking about training is because uh, once you start working with facial action coding systems, you are supposed to train yourself with certain training manuals, where you have to decipher micro expressions, which are shown to you for 1 by 15th of a second. And when you do that, you find that uh, your ability to communicate uh, your ability to understand uh, the different emotions are something which are tested again and again until you level, uh, reach a certain level of maturity and then you are kind of given a, the status of a certified uh, trainee in understanding facial emotions. So, for many of the studies that we do in deceit, we actually take the help of such trainers or some of our students go and get trained and then they come and identify different emotions. Now, as I told you deceit is something on which we are working, we have online things for you and uh, I am sure that you are doing them, but more important than that this small presentation on facial emotions I hope will go a certain way in clarifying some of the issues related to how difficult it is to identify guess somebody else's emotions. And I hope that from the next point, next uh, I hope that next time you see somebody or you look at somebody, you look very carefully for these changes that are taking place in different parts of the face, so that you can understand other people's emotions better. Because understanding other people's emotions takes you one step ahead in the direction of better communication, because it is a part of better listening, better understanding, and Hence, I hope that uh, this short talk has been meaningful to you. Thank you friends.